Good morning guys, in today's videos everything about the Bitcoin halving, about the Bitcoin support and resistance levels, who is Satoshi Nakamoto according one of the Bitcoin creators, some news about Tron and Samsung, some news about why we need a new reserve currency and how it has developed in the last few years and why do I agree with Elon Musk and John McAfee about our democracy being hacked. And a little bit sad private news about a, my favorite bar closing in the Netherlands. Check the whole episode to see all this news. Good morning, guys. From my office on Copangan, it's raining. Yes, I'm even outside when it rains to make this content for you guys. I need to check if the camera is rolling. Yep, the camera is rolling. Um, it's rainy. It has been raining the last two, three days on Copangan. And that's really cool because it's really refreshing. The kids love it. They are dancing in the rain and uh, they love that there is not that much heat at the moment. Heat. Talking about heat, let's talk about Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin is nearing its resistance, long-term resistance. It's the 8K we are watching at the moment. I think the 8K is a very important resistance level at the moment. Um, why? What, what is it? Why is it resistance? Because it's about one and a half million wallets that bought Bitcoin around $8,000. So 1.5 million wallets bought Bitcoin around $8,000. That means that those people that bought Bitcoin at that time at 8K uh, had a huge crash to 3K, for example. So now they, if they haven't sold yet with the loss, they will be very happy if Bitcoin now goes back to 8K because then they will be break even. And most of the people that have fear or that live in fear or the fear that Bitcoin is not going to succeed will try to break even and start to sell their Bitcoins. And that is why it's called resistance because then it goes up to 8K and all those people that bought at 8K are trying to sell the Bitcoins because they don't have the belief in the long term of Bitcoin or they just don't understand the long term of Bitcoin. And then because they sell, Bitcoin can go drop back again. It could drop back then to seven and a half thousand dollars why because there is a huge level of support what does the huge level of support mean it means that there is about 1.2 million addresses that bought bitcoin around seven and a half thousand so these people are not willing to sell they bought around seven and a half k they are now in profit and if bitcoin retraces a little bit they are not willing to sell because they still hope Bitcoin will go up again to 10k, 20k, 30k, 100k or a million or 330 to 3 million dollars um, because they believe in the fundamentals and that makes it difficult for Bitcoin to go below this level. It's not the biggest support level but it is a support level. So this is what support and resistance means in, um, in simple words. Just people willing to sell or not willing to sell because they want to make profit or because they don't want to make losses. This coalites exactly with the amount of searches in Google um, about Bitcoin halving. I already spoke about this in a video last week. Um, I saw Carl the Moon now mentioning it yesterday or the day before as well in the video. Yes, the Bitcoin halving search in Google is going parabolic. And many people are searching for this. This means that a lot of people now want to know what a halving is and what it can do for the price. Most of the Google researches, which is really interesting, that you will find, will show you that the year after the halving will be the exploding year, you know, that will be the bull run. Because all those people that are now searching halving, they will all find the result, wow, after the halving, Bitcoin will start a parabolic bull run. This is very positive, because if you Google something, you read it, most people believe it. So they are probably going to buy bitcoins or hold their bitcoins and not sell them 
So this makes it me uh, very bullish. This together with who I spoke about it, I think three days ago in a video, that the amount of 0.1 Bitcoin hodling wallets is increasing daily as well. A huge amount. I think it has an all time high of wallets that own 0.1 Bitcoin. So many people believing in Bitcoin at the moment, and that's, uh, I think, very positive. Is there some more Bitcoin news? Yes, there is. We have Scott Stornetta, who's one of the creators of the blockchain. He's mentioned many times in the uh, Satoshi White Paper. He now is saying, I am not Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, he's also explaining why he thinks Satoshi Nakamoto is the name. Um, you need to read a full article for this because it's too much to explain for me now. But one of the things I was reading as well is that he was very, very clear. Crack White is not Satoshi Nakamoto. So, hope Scott uh, Sonata is, uh, is right. I just hope we don't ever find out who is Satoshi Nakamoto and just keep it as most as uh, decentralized so that nobody can get or talk to the guy and tell him now you need to shut down or create new software or create a new blockchain that is killing the other blockchain. Talking about other blockchains, um, one of the questions in one of my latest videos was if I believed in Hashgraph. I haven't investigated Hashgraph as much, to be honest, as I, um, uh, as I should have probably. Uh, I do think that the Hedera or Hedera version of Hashgraph, which is the public one, um, is is kind of a decentralized good version that can compete with blockchain in the future. But you need to understand that blockchain has been around already for 10 years and has been proving its stability, has been proving this robust software that has been, for example, the Bitcoin and Litecoin blockchain have been online for 100%, no downtime. Um, I, I don't know if we can say this already about Hashgraph. I don't know exactly the technology about uh, in Hashgraph. I know they are also uh, saying that they are decentralized, but it's also built on something that is um, patented. There is a company behind it that patented the technology. Then there is some other news. Yes, not Bitcoin related news. Tron is now working a little bit more together with Samsung because now the Tron devs and Tron games are going to be added to the Samsung Galaxy App Store, which is really, um, I think, positive for you know, mass adoption because everybody uses a phone nowadays and you know, not everybody is happy with Tron and the way they market stuff, etc. But I can only say I can see them working on mass adoption and this is what uh, I think uh, Justin and the believers are doing right. So working together with Samsung. Okay, now the most important news for me. Yes, I read a beautiful article about there is need of a new reserve currency. Yes, there is need of a new reserve currency. We need to get rid of this dollar reserve currency now. To be honest, if you look at history, reserve currencies has, have always changed in like 80 to 120 years something. Every 100 years, of, let's, say, let, let's say every 100 years, we had a new reserve currency. You know, if you look back in history, you, could see, you can see that um, I think it was Portugal that was the first reserve currency and then it became the Spanish peseta, which was the reserve currency. Then we had the Dutch Gilder in the golden times of the Netherlands, which will probably never come back. <coughs> but they even had the reserve currency. I think after the Netherlands, the French, the France franc, came as a reserve currency, and that was followed up by the Great Britain's pound, which was the reserve currency for 100 years or something. And then we got the US dollar, which is now nearing the 105th year being the reserve currency. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not perfect in details, but that means that we are ready for a new reserve currency. Is this going to be a global reserve currency? 
This is the question. And can cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or any other stable coin play a part or play a role in this new reserve currency? I hope it will. I hope it will. But we never know what the governments that have been taking a lot of crazy steps, probably forced and pushed by the huge banking system, what they are going to do now. What is their new big plan? And I don't know yet because I think the focus now for all of them is on world control through fear and that is their main focus and there I can only agree with John McAfee and Elon Musk is that um, what they both agreed on is that our democracy has just been hacked. Yes, our democracy has just been hacked. How just it all was done by creating anticipatory fear around this flu, around the possibility of dying, they were able to put everybody back in fear and now even we are giving up our privacy and our human rights now because of fear for something that could happen in the future. Again, I'm, rep I'm repeating, we are giving up our human rights and freedom out of fear for something that could happen in the future. And that's what they mean with our democracy has just been hacked. So John and Ellen, if you're going to leave Earth on a spaceship to another planet to build up a more honest, uh, <laughs> democratic world, can you please call me? I will, I will join you and my family. There is one more very important news item uh, you guys won't be able to relate to it, but I personally can really relate to it because I was just I was just notified my hair keeps blowing me in my face I was just notified by some friends from my hometown in Venlo That a bar called the Rupadup is closing its doors from the 1st of May This is very sad news because this bar and its owner Frankie has been around for 32 years in Venlo on the most important like bar street in Venlo. This is a bar founded by a Maluku entrepreneur. So if you know my background is Moluccan and this guy opened the bar 32 years ago and it was such a cool bar. We were spending so much time there. Every time when I visited Netherlands, the only bar I still visited was the Rubber Duck. Because you could have a good talk, a good dance, a lot of fun. The host, Frankie and Denise were such lovely, beautiful people. Just being there to give you an amazing time. He made the best Bacardi Coke all over the world. Frank, if you're seeing this video, I don't think you watch YouTube, but if you're seeing the video, thank you for those amazing years in the Rub It Up with Carnival every Saturday, every Friday, with my soccer team coming there, whatever. But thank you for your passion in giving us all these amazing times and moments in the Rub It Up and in and, and Venlo. Uh, I'm really sad to hear that you need to close your doors and I'm even more sad that I'm not there to celebrate the last few evenings with you guys. But I wish you a lot of fun, Frank, a lot of fun in the future in this how do you call it, pensionada future, where you can spend a lot of time with your family and friends on the other side of the bar and just sit there, hang out, chat and order your drink. Rub it up, thanks for all the love you gave to whole Venlo and all our community. Thanks Frank and I wish you a lot of fun in the future. Okay guys, that is really the end of the video now. I want to thank you for watching the video. I want to ask you to subscribe to the channel, to give it a thumbs up, to hit the bell button so you'll be notified on every new video I make. Um, please share the video with friends. We need some new followers. We need some more views so we can start to monetize the channel and because we want to share the profit of this monetization with the poor people all around the world. But that is why it is important. Whew, that was a lot of words again, Didi. I wish you an amazing Tuesday and an amazing week. I hope you live life to the fullest 24-7, day in, day out, and life will become a beautiful thing. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye. People should not be afraid of the governments, but the government should be afraid of the people. 
V for Vendetta. So I love it in the van. Let's see how we can pay now with Bitcoin. Live with this. <laughs>